The following program is sponsored by the Hope Team, friends and partners of Keith Nix Ministries. Coming up on The Lift with Keith and Margie Nix. You shall receive power, dynamis, force, miraculous ability. God's design for the church is not that we people think about the church in Sevier County and say, oh yeah, there are a lot of churches there. Yeah, there's a lot of Christians. No, God's design is that people say, those people, they, they walk around like they got something. When they say, Jesus, I feel something. I hear people all the time saying his name. But when those folks, when those folks, when they just speak the name Jesus, it seems like something changes in the atmosphere. I believe God's looking for a people that will represent him well out there in your world. Hello and welcome to The Lift. Delighted that you're there. Delighted to be here to be able to share with you God's word. I am excited about the message that we kicked off last week and the message we're going to finish up today. You won't hear it all in its entirety. I encourage you to contact our office, get a copy of it uh, because it'll minister to you. It's a revelation I believe that the church is in great need of today. And I'm so glad you're here to hear it today. I want to say, before we move into the message, I want to say a big thank you again to our partners and friends who help make us, uh, who, who help enable us to be able to be with you uh, and minister to you through this venue. We thank you very much. And I want to encourage you uh, saying thanks to those who've taken the time out of your life, your busy lives, to write us, to call us, to contact us, to let us know that we've been a blessing to you, been a help to you. Uh, keep doing that. We, we appreciate it. We love hearing what God is doing in your life through this simple television program. So we're going to jump back in the Word of God. We're looking at staying lit to the power of Pentecost. And we're talking about the fact that Jesus said, you shall receive power to become witnesses. Everything else we talk about in the weeks to come, and this series has just been such a, a revolutionary release of revelation in our local congregation. I believe it'll do the same for you. And everything we're going to talk about in the weeks to come, it all hinges on this one premise that the power of Pentecost is ultimately at its roots, it's the power to live beyond self and to live for Jesus Christ. And only the only way we can really do it is through the power of the Holy Spirit. So stay with me. I'll be back at the end of the program to pray with you. I believe God's going to speak to you in a powerful way. Let's go right now back into the message. So Jesus instructed us to go. But in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, he said, you're going to receive power before you go. Ah, hallelujah. Sean shared in the very beginning, before you go, wait. What are we waiting on, sir? Wait for the promise of the Father. Wait for the Holy Spirit to come upon you. He didn't tell him how long to wait. He didn't tell him what day their waiting would be over. They didn't know it would be on Shabbat. They didn't know it would happen on Pentecost. They didn't know when, but they went and waited. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were in one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting and set upon them cloven divided tongues as of fire a flame for every head in the room. And verse 4, I'm quoting from Acts 2 right now. Verse 4, and they began to speak with other tongues, languages they had never learned, as the Spirit gave them the utterance, the ability. Hallelujah. And so they didn't know what was going to happen. They didn't know what it was going to look like, feel like, be like. All they knew is he said, wait. And look at verse 8. He said, 
you shall receive. Somebody read it aloud with me. Acts 1 verse 8. But you shall receive. Oh, that sounds beautiful. Can we say it again? But you shall receive. Power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Thank God the Holy Spirit comes to live in me and he comes upon me to empower me and he lives through me to touch others. Oh, thank you, Lord. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit's come upon you and you shall be witnesses. Somebody say witnesses. Now, now stop, stop with me right here. Look at your neighbor and say power. That word in the Greek is the word dynamis. We get our word dynamite from it. You shall receive power. He's not talking about power. He's talking about power. Oh, I'm going to try this side over here. because they, I don't think they got it yet. He's not talking about power. He's talking about power. Hallelujah. You shall receive power. That word literally could be translated miraculous ability. Ooh. Now watch this. Jesus says you're going to receive ability beyond your ability to become who it is I'm calling you to become. Hallelujah. How many, how many think we need to get back? We need as a church, as a people, you as an individual, me as an individual. How many think it'd be very good if we got back to the place where we understand how to live, not by our limited abilities, but by his unlimited ability? How many think, hallelujah, how many think it'd be great if instead of counting on our talent and our ability and our organizational skills and our programs to transform Sevier County, how many think it'd be great if believers all over the city today would say, Lord, we want you to fill us afresh with the Holy Spirit power. We want God. Come on, can somebody take five seconds and lift your hand and say, I, I want to learn how to live beyond my ability. I've tried it long enough in Keith's ability. I've tried it long enough. Come on. Hallelujah. I've not just, I'm not just trying to preach this. I, I want to live this. I want to live consistently growing in understanding and experience of what it means to live by the power that comes when the Holy Spirit comes. You shall receive power, dynamis, force, miraculous ability, super for your natural, extra for your ordinary. God's design for the church is not that we people think about the church in Sevier County and say, oh yeah, there are a lot of churches there. Yeah, there's a lot of Christians. No, and they ho-hum about it. God's design is that people say, who? Those people? Hmm. I don't know about those people. Those people are a little strange. Those people, they, they walk around like they got something. They, 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 they act like they really believe this stuff. When they say, Jesus, I feel something. I mean, when they say it, when they say it, I, I, I hear people all the time saying his name. But when those folks, when those folks, when they just speak the name Jesus, it seems like something changes in the atmosphere. Oh, hallelujah, my, I feel, I feel the witness of the Spirit. I believe God's looking for a people that will represent him well out there in your world. I don't mean fruity and kooky and I don't mean you see somebody in, in Walmart and, wow, glory, whoa, Jesus. Well, that, just, that, just, that just freaks people out. They're not even going to hang around long enough to see if the atmosphere shifts. It's shifting because they're gone. So we're not talking about flaky and nutty and, you know, going up to somebody in the middle of the grocery store and trying to push them down. Come on. No, 
no, no, that, that, <laughs> we're not talking about that. But we're talking about living life in the miraculous ability of the Holy Spirit so that when you say his name, hallelujah, something begins to transpire. I've, hallelujah. And they may still at first draw back from you, but I guarantee you they'll begin to smell something, sense something, feel something, be attracted to something that is beyond you. Hallelujah. And somebody lift your hand and say, one day I can say, I can say to them, it's Jesus. His name, come on, can you just praise with me for a moment? His name is Jesus. Now watch this. I don't have time to even unpack the first point this morning, but I, I, want, you to, I want you to hear me. I've taken a little bit of time because I want you to understand we're going to talk about in this series. We called the series Stay Lit. Stay Lit. Stay Lit. Look at somebody and say, Stay Lit. Now let me let me deal let me deal with those of us who are over the age of 25. Because if we're over the age of 25, we know that lit means intoxicated. All right, this generation they don't know what it means. So they thought it sounded cool, so they made up a meaning for it. So since the early 1900s it's been intoxicated, but now we have a generation that says, "Oh no, it means excited." It means awesome. It means cool. It means excellent. But for those of us who know that words <laughs> have meaning beyond the last 10 years, I'm losing some amens right now. Come on. Hallelujah. Let me, let me just, let me just tell you that we're just going, we're going to reclaim it and we're just going to join in with this, with the millennials right now. And we're going to talk about staying lit. But, but can I just tell you if it won't freak you out too much that, uh, we'll go ahead and reach back and use that original definition just a little bit, because I believe, I believe God needs some people that are intoxicated in the new wine of heaven. Hallelujah. Come on. I know I'm risking, I'm risking somebody getting freaked out right now, but I do believe God, God's looking for some people that are under the influence. Come on. Is there anybody willing to be under the influence of the, of the Holy Spirit in your life? Hallelujah. So will you lift your hand and say, Lord, I want to be lit. I want to be under the influence of your spirit. I want to be excited. I want to be, I want to be living excellent for you. Hallelujah. So I'm going to share with you over the next few weeks some things that we're going to stay lit to. Number one, stay lit to be uncommon witnesses. Whew. Number two, stay lit to uncommon communication. Mm. Number three, stay lit to living in uncommon unity. Then we'll talk about uncommon generosity, uncommon word, uncommon prayer, uncommon happenings. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Uncommon ideas. How many want to be open to uncommon but God ideas that can change a generation? Hallelujah. Un look at somebody and say, I want to be open to uncommon honesty. I want to live in an uncommon identity. Hallelujah. Is there anybody here who'd like to, to know what it is to be an uncommon worshiper? Look at somebody and say, I want to I experience uncommon joy. We're going to talk about these things. As I close today, come on, Jack. As I close today, I want us to go back uh, to the very first one. I don't have time to unpack it, but I just want to touch it real quick. So I'd hope to get through two today. But look over at somebody and say, you're such a beautiful audience. Hallelujah. That he's had too much fun in the beginning. Now, I believe we've covered some important things because I just, I, I just felt like God wanted me to take a few moments and, and try to make certain that you understand. We, we know we haven't arrived yet. We know that we may not always be trekking in the, in the balance we're seeking for and we're after. But we are after the balance of the word of God. We are after, we are after a, a balance, a holy balance between the word. We're not, we're not, you don't come to the lift church and lose your intelligence. We believe God wants anointed, intelligent people. Come on, hallelujah. But we don't want you to be intelligent and not be living in the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We're going to walk in the truth that makes us free. 
And I believe this is the church's hour. Somebody say amen to that again. So let me, let me close this morning by just talking about, he said, Acts chapter 1 verse 8 again, but you shall receive power. Everybody say power. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you, watch this, and you shall be witnesses. Now, now, now look at me for a second. He doesn't say you will do witnessing. He says you will become a witness. So you, you, it's not about, okay, every other Saturday or a Saturday once a month, you're going to go out on the streets and witness. No, it's about every day of your life, everywhere you are, you are a witness for Jesus Christ. In your Jerusalem, in our Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and somebody lift your hand and say, and to the end of the earth. These are the last words of Jesus to the church. When he ascended, just before he ascended into heaven, he said, go into all the world. May I make this declaration to you that the last words of Jesus should always be the first priority of the believers. He said, go into all the world and preach the good news. That's his last words. So that's got to become again our first priority. And this is why this is first. This is why this is first. We've got to be everything else that unfolds, whether it be tongues, whether it be prophecy, whether it be miracles, healing, everything else that unfolds is for the purpose of spreading the good news. So let me, let me say this. Some of you taking notes, you need to write this down. Stay lit to be uncommon witnesses. What is this? Watch this. This is the power to live beyond yourself. This is the power to live beyond yourself. Christianity, if you know anything at all about it, it's all about resurrection. Resurrection life, resurrection power. But there can, there's no need for resurrection unless there's a death. Mm. So Jesus said in Mark chapter 8, verse 34, whoever desires to come after me, let him or her deny, deny themselves. That word deny means lose sight of. Mm. Lose sight of yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. There could be no resurrection unless there's a death. Christ Jesus came to make you alive. How many know you were born dead? You were born dead to God. But Jesus came and died so that you and I could live to God. But here's what Christianity is. It's living to God and now we're supposed to be dead to sin. Dead to our flesh. Dead to our own passions and our own lusts and our own desires. How many will give me two minutes? We're supposed to be dead to the things of this world. Here's the problem. I got to close with this today on this Pentecost Sunday. Watch this. The reason the church has been so lifeless, so powerless, is not because God doesn't do these things anymore. It's not because God's not a healer now, not a deliverer. It's not because the gifts of the Spirit are not valid for us today. They are valid. I'll show you that. I believe I can prove that to you from the Scripture. But, but the reason we see so little of these supernatural happenings from heaven going on in our world is because we haven't learned how to live dead to me. And alive to him. So even, even when it comes to the gifts of the spirit. Even when it comes to tongues. Even when it comes to prophecy. Even when it comes to healings. So much of that has become all about us. And when it becomes about you. It's no longer a pure flow. Hallelujah. So Jesus said you got to lose sight of yourself. The word witness. The word translated witness is the word martyr, martyr. You shall receive power to be martyrs. 
A martyr is a spectator, someone who has observed some things and who is so convinced by what they've seen, heard, experienced, known. They're so convinced by it, they're willing to die for it. Oh. I watched a movie recently called Paul the Apostle. Anybody seen that movie? Man, it's powerful. You, you ought to see it. It's a power. Now, there's some things, you know, that I would rewrite, but that's just the preacher in me. But it is such a powerful reminder, a powerful reminder of how the early church suffered persecution and died for the cause of Christ. And we in this generation in America are so insulated from that. And I know there's some thinking, well, I, I believe, I just believe, and I think you would. I hope you would. I believe that if it came to it, this place is filled with people who would not deny Christ, but would stand even to the point of death and say, I cannot, I cannot turn my back on Jesus. I believe this house is filled with people like that. But I just want to challenge you that being a martyr is not just something that you have to be prepared for should it happen someday, but it's something that should happen every day. How could I really think that I would give my life for him in that way if I can't really give my life for him? in the little everyday issues of life. If I've got to reach for the best piece of chicken before anybody else can get it. We were going into a, a place just the other night. My goodness, people. I mean, they'd knock you down. They'd knock you down to get to a reserve seat and knock you down to get to a car that belongs to them. It's your car. You've got the keys for it. Nobody's going to take it from you. Calm down, buddy. Well, what, what is it a sign of? I mean, and they don't even they, they didn't even, they didn't even apologize. They didn't even accidentally bump into you and say, oh, I'm sorry. No, no. I don't even think they saw us. You're just, you're just trees. Uh-oh. What's it a sign of? It's a, <laughs> hallelujah. And I'm not just talking about people that don't know Jesus. There was a healing meeting a number of years ago, about 15 years ago, a healing meeting where they had a stampede, a stampede outside, people trying to rush in to get the best seats in the healing service, and four or five people got really injured. Well, it's a good thing they were there at a healing service. Because they got beat up trying to get in. What's, what's the point? Is, is we're so aware of self. Very few people have tapped into the power to live beyond self. But that's the power of Pentecost. Come on, can I preach just a second or two? I said, that's the power of Pentecost. The true power of Pentecost, the essence of Pentecost is the Holy Spirit comes in to enable you to live for more than you. And in living for more than me, he releases the ability to do more than I could ever do and to be more than I could ever be. And I feel like praising him right now. Hallelujah. The power of Pentecost is the power to live beyond self. God doesn't fill us with the Holy Spirit for our enjoyment. He fills us with the Holy Spirit for our employment. He's got a purpose for your life. He's got a, he's got a work. He's going to work through you that's going to bring glory to him and is going to bring good to your generation. And you'll have to have the infilling, the power of the Holy Spirit in order to, to live it out. And so I pray you'll begin to seek him. I'm going to pray with you right now. If you've never given your life to Christ, come on, man. What are you waiting on? Dear lady, what are you waiting on? Surrender. Maybe you've been raised in church all your life, but you've never really made Jesus the Lord of your life. Maybe you prayed a prayer 
and you hope your sins are forgiven, but you're not sure. Let's, let's get it settled right now. I only have a few seconds with you, but I encourage you. I'm going to lead you in prayer. I'm going to pray with you, and you pray right where you are, and then take time. The information's on the screen. Take time to contact us. Let us pray with you a little deeper. Let us, let us send you a free booklet. It talks about how to live in the victory of God in this new life that you can have in Christ. So, Father, I lift my friends up to you in the name of Jesus, and I pray, Lord, that anyone who doesn't know you may right now be the moment when they have faith rise in their heart to say, Jesus, forgive me of my sin. I do believe you're God. Come in the flesh. You paid the price so that I could be right with you. Forgive me and come into my heart and live, Lord God. Take, take over. Be Lord of my life. Father, I pray if there's a backslider that right now they'll come home. They'll just say, Father, here I am. Restore me. Help me. In Jesus' name, Father, I pray if there are believers that aren't living in the reality of the baptism and the infilling of the Holy Spirit, may this be the moment when they say, Lord, God, I want everything you have for me. And I pray you would just gloriously fill them in Jesus' mighty name. And I believe he's going to do that. Write us, call us, let us know how we can continue to pray with you. And come visit us at the Lift Church. We look forward to shaking hands with you and getting to know you. Until next time, remember, Jesus is Lord. Let him be the Lord of your life. Make your plans now to experience the life-changing ministry of best-selling author and teacher, Jerry Savelle. For over 40 years, Jerry Savelle has devoted his life to teaching believers across the globe the biblical principles of faith, the favor of God, and financial increase. Through personal stories, solid teaching, and inspired motivation, you'll discover how to persevere when situations are tough and stand on God's Word until victory is achieved. You may be in the greatest battle right now you've ever been in in your life. You may feel like you can't stand anymore. You've done all you know to do, and yet you don't see anything working in the natural. That is always an indication you got the devil right where you want him. He is a, he has just fired his best shot. You're still standing, and you're going to win. Hallelujah. Don't miss your opportunity to see Jerry Savelle live and hear an encouraging, faith-saturated word from God that will inspire your faith and equip you to win in life.